Hey, what's up? This is Reed. Normally I make smart home videos, but today I'm going to show you what I use to make videos. And since we're not a huge YouTube channel, we do have to make our videos on a budget. I'll show you what our current setup is and what we use when we first started out. I'll also go over one of our main secrets for growing our YouTube channel. I'm currently using the Sony a6400 camera. I bought this a few months ago and I've been really happy with it. A lot of YouTube channels that know cameras way better than me said it was one of the best cameras for making YouTube videos. I can't agree more, I love this thing. I bought it with an 18-135 to kit lens on it. This lens is a good all around lens. For example, I shot the entire 25 automation ideas video on it. The main issue with the lens is that it struggles in low light. That's where the Sigma 16mm wide angle lens comes in. This lens's aperture goes down to 1.4, so the amount of light that can go into the camera is much larger. I shot the entire TV automation ideas video on this lens, which came in really handy since a lot of the shots were in low light. The Sigma lens has a great autofocus with the Sony cameras, but it doesn't have optical steady shot like the kit lens does, so it's good to have it on a tripod most of the time. I'm using a Manfrotto tripod and fluid head. This tripod is lightweight and very sturdy. The fluid head is key to making those smooth pans and tilts. I always have a rubber band attached to the handle so that I can use it to make them even more steady. You don't really need it with a fluid head, but I like using it. I keep the ball heads all the same on all my tripods so that I can quickly move the camera between them. For the overhead shots, I use a microphone stand attached to the desk and it works pretty well. The camera can shake if I hit the desk, but it's a really easy and inexpensive way to get an overhead shot. For lighting, I use some softbox lights that I bought a couple of years ago on Amazon and they still work pretty well. Soft lighting can help make things look so much better. Look at the difference between the harsh light versus the softer lighting. For shots around the house, I'm using a small light which is my new favorite. It gives off a very soft light that dims and can get really bright. It can also change the white Kelvin so you can have it be a warm or a cool white. It can run on battery or you can plug it in for power. I have it attached to an Amazon Basics tripod and it makes for a super lightweight, powerful light setup. For my microphone, I'm using a Rode Mic Pro. I've always struggled with audio, but ever since I got this and some acoustic panels, things have gotten better. Get some headphones and adjust your audio because it can make a major difference. Just listen to an older video of mine before I started doing all of this. The Nest 3rd Gen's box is a little bit bigger. The reason for that is it has an extra metal plate. Before I had the Sony a6400, I had the Canon SL2. And this was a great beginner camera because it taught me the basics like ISO, aperture, and manual focus. And the settings on this thing are not overwhelming like the Sony cameras can be. The price on this thing is also pretty reasonable, but if you're looking to pay even less, I'll show you what we used when we first started out. When we started doing YouTube, I just filmed everything on my smartphone, and I still do sometimes. I even filmed the majority of the CES video I did on my Galaxy S8. I got some funny looks at CES when I would pull out the phone to shoot video. People thinking, is this amateur hour? But hey, you gotta start somewhere. Some people did like what I had attached to the phone for video though. This rig is pretty cool and it can attach a microphone and light to it. I just plugged in a Rode Micro with a special cord that goes into the phone so you can get some really good shots with this setup. It's easy to hold steady and it has threads on the bottom to easily attach to a tripod. I'll link to everything down in the description. This other little device is really inexpensive and can help you hold your phone a little more steady. It also has threads on the bottom that you can put on a tripod. It's no gimbal, but phones already have such good stabilization now that you might not need a gimbal. If you want to make YouTube videos and all you have is a smartphone, you could grow a decent sized YouTube channel with only these few accessories for shooting video on your phone. If you think about creating a YouTube video, you probably think about cameras, lights, and everything we just talked about, but that's not how I spend the majority of my time. What I usually end up doing is working at a computer. So if you're thinking about quitting that desk job to make YouTube videos, well, you might end up back at a desk. At the computer, I'm sending emails, planning videos, looking at analytics, answering comments, writing scripts, and editing videos in Final Cut Pro. Being at the computer so much, it's important to have a good desk and chair. The chair that I'm using is the Kin Chair from Autonomous. Autonomous reached out to me to try out the chair a few months ago and it's been awesome. It caught my eye because it had a white color that matched my desk. It's also unique because the seat is made out of a combination of rubber and plastic. It has these little springs in the seat and the back doesn't have a frame. With all those things, it's comfortable in a way that I can sit for a while and my back doesn't hurt. But it's not so comfortable that I'll fall asleep in it. 
It's like the right amount of comfort to keep me really productive. The only thing that I thought would be better was the breathability of the seat. It's not bad, but I thought it would be a little bit better like my old mesh office chair. However, the kin chair is much more adjustable, comfortable, and better built than that. So overall, I'm happy with it. I also have a standing desk from Foley that I've had for a few years. Standing desks are great because you can be standing for an unboxing, stand at your desk to make a YouTube video like Dave2D does, or if you've been sitting for a while and you just need to stand up, it can jumpstart your productivity. I'm using a 4K monitor that I got recently when I started shooting in 4K with the Sony a6400. I bought this monitor because it's bright, color accurate, and not too expensive. Perfect for editing 4K video on a budget. In a previous video, I went into more detail about the tech and automations I use in my office. So go check it out if you want to see more about that. There is no perfect way to make a video. And because of this, it's very difficult to find a balance between not being too critical of yourself and improving over time. My wife, Allie, helps out a lot on videos. She helps plan them, writes the title, the description, creates the thumbnail, and a lot more. But what's really key is that she's really good at telling me what I should add and cut from the videos. Seriously, the secret to creating a good video is having an Allie on your team, someone who's not scared to tell you what you should change. Also, be willing to listen to the people that are commenting on your videos. I'm not talking about the trolls, but the people that are giving legit feedback. It can be easy to take offense, but if you listen to it, it can be really helpful. I love making YouTube videos and I try to improve every single week. It's not easy making videos, but it is rewarding, especially hearing from you guys that the video was helpful in some way. If you guys have any questions about making videos, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.